<laughs> okay. All right. So the bad news is we didn't finish on Sunday. The good news is we had one more class. So I think, uh, well, and the other part of the good news is this is the last class on Tyre, unless Daniel wants to take the next week or a week's worth of classes to, to keep us going. Um, so we're going to do a brief review of 26 and 27. Uh, we're in Ezekiel. Uh, we're going to focus mainly on chapter 28, but we're going to look at it holistically as we uh, do our wrap-up here. Um, so you'll see a repeat of a couple of slides, um, but that's okay. That's how it works. At least that's how it works in my book. Um, so the class objectives, um, again, I, I love having the, uh, the previous teacher here in the, the classroom <laughs> because he's going to be like, hey, I did all these. Um, what are the sins for which Tyre is judged by God? And you'll notice I didn't make it plural this time because I'm not sure that there's more than one. Uh, so we'll have to talk about it. So I, I've revised my thinking after having gone through the class. Uh, the second one is explain why God spends so much time uh, with Tyre than the other nations. And we're going to see that that's going to be true up to this point, but it's not going to be true with the next nation that he uh, judges, which I'm not going to give it away, but it's Egypt. Um, and then the third one is explain what lessons we can learn and apply for us today. So I've tried to build in some time for us to actually break into groups, which I knew I didn't have time for on Sunday. So we'll see if I actually remember to do that. Um, so these are our objectives for today. Um, I did want to revisit this map slide because uh, Michael had pointed out, as we had talked about, that uh, one of the judgments against Tyre was that the island would be no more, or I'm sorry, that the, the city would be no more. And originally Tyre was built kind of in two parts. It was on an island and it was on the mainland. And then, um, is it Alexander the Great? Uh, when he came to attack Tyre, they actually built a, a land bridge to get out to the island. And I think, well, I don't know specifically, I think that that's some of what we're seeing up on the uh, slide. But if you look at Google Maps, or if you go to Wikipedia, or the uh, uh, Britannica.com, uh, you can actually see that part of that island had, has, is underwater. And that's the part I circled up there on the map. Uh, there's a northern part and a southern part. So it does appear that a significant portion, maybe I'll call it half, of the uh, original island is underwater and it is no more. Uh, it'd be used for nets, uh, spreading their nets. So um, anyway, that was my uh, aha moment uh, as Michael and I were reflecting on it. Um, okay, so a quick review. Uh, the judgment against uh, Tyre. This is what we covered in Sunday's class. So I'm not going to really try to go uh, beyond that. But this is your first question on the handout. So we're again trying to incorporate all the lessons that Daniel taught us three years ago when we were back in the back learning how to teach. So answer me this. Number one, because if I click, it's going to go ahead and show it. So I don't want to do that yet. Um, Number one on your handout, blank and blank on Tyre. Uh, Ezekiel 26, 2 through 21. What is that first section? Does anyone remember? Prophecy and judgment. All right, you get the prize. Thank you. What is the prize? I don't know. <laughs> I've got candy at the back. <laughs> okay, um, the second section, something for Tyre. Uh, and this is really looking at Ezekiel chapter 27. This is, again, the second view or lens within which tires looked at. Lament. I heard lament. Mourning. Um, I'm going to go with lament because that's what's on the slide. <laughs> and then the third part is prophecy and lament for blank of tire. And that's what we're going to be covering tonight. The king. So specifically, or the ruler. So we're going to be looking... So chapter 26, the lens was really the prophecy and judgment on the city. Um, the, the chapter 27 was really looking at, look how sad this is, right? This is the lament, and it's the lament of the people. It's also the lament of the people that traded with them, the ones that are walking by or coming up and looking at them as well. And then we're going to look specifically at uh, the ruler here. And I think, well, I personally think that chapter 28 is the most interesting here as we uh, get into it. So a quick review, um, when, did, when did Ezekiel write the judgment, write this judgment? 
Mm -hmm. The 11th year, yes. And we think that that is during what significant event? The siege of Jerusalem, I heard shouted out by the front row on the left. Um, yes. How is it different? How is this different? How is the judgment on different, uh, I'm sorry, the judgment on Tyre different than what we had covered up to this point? What did the other nations do specifically that they were condemned for? Uh, we've got, go ahead. All right. Okay. Um, well, I don't think that Tyre and Israel and Judah were ever at war with one another. So they were not not uh, in conflict uh, through armies. And so it goes to their sin of pride, I think, and their, I think, gaining advantage over Judah and Jerusalem and growing on their pain of uh, destruction. So what was, what was the sin that the other nations were condemned for? You already said it. They were brutal in the way they attacked Jerusalem. Okay. and There was constant war yeah. back and forth. Well, not constant, but off and on war. Um, and that's exactly what. They were setting themselves up against Jerusalem. They would be happy if Jerusalem went away, or if Judah. And I'm substituting Jerusalem and Judah here, right or wrong, but, but I'm doing that. Um, and then Tyre's goal was uh, to, oh, I can't read that. My glasses are back there substitute themselves for Jerusalem. Now that Jerusalem is going to be, right, what's happening right now, they're under siege, right? Jerusalem is under siege. Who's going to win, Jerusalem or Babylon? Okay, we know that because of hindsight. If you're there at the time, if you're with Ezekiel, and you're in the, 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 um, uh, the people, right, with him, the exiles are there in, Bab in, yeah, in Babylon, who do they think is going to win? Who? Maybe. It could be, it could be a mixed bag. They're, they're definitely, the people in Jerusalem think they're going to be saved. Right? Because God's always come through. He has always come through. Every single time before this, God has come through. What makes this time different? And that's what Ezekiel's part of his message. This time is different. And he's been telling them that for 24 chapters. Uh, for 10 years, right? This is the 11th year. So the, for 10 years, he's been telling the exiles, this is, this is different. So this time when um, Tyre is being talked to, they're like, hey, it's going to happen. It's going to happen this time. Jerusalem will be destroyed. Let us come in and take our place in their place. And we think, well, we see that quite often. Uh, so we see that in verse 20. Three, verse 26, they would move right in with no competition. We see it in verse 2 of chapter 27. Um, they would become the complete center of the... I don't know where the rest of that sentence went. Um, center of the area. Um, and then, because Jerusalem was God's city, in Psalm 48, uh, we read about that, but now it's broken... Um, that was, this is, the, this is the challenge, right? They, they thought they could just come in and, and do this. So for what sin was God condemning Tyre? Again, this is review. I think I already heard it once. Okay, it's pride. She thought she was. All right, I'm going to let you all fill in the blank. I'm going to give you the verse, and you can tell me what I was thinking. Uh, look at chapter 27, verse 3. Finish these thoughts. Finish these sentences. Twenty-seven, verse three. Perfect in beauty, beautiful and perfect. Hmm. Spot on. Reading my mind. Um, verse five through seven in chapter twenty-seven. We talked about this a little bit on Sunday. So I'm gonna. I'll, I'll supply it. Envied. Uh, she was envied. All commerce, commerce came through her, right? So if you've got goods coming from the west, they land in Tyre, they get traded, they go east. The goods from the east come to Tyre, they get traded, they get put on the ships going west. That's the place to be. Tyre is the one. And then finally, in verse uh, 8 through 11, uh, there's one more 
She was condemned for pride because she thought she was, and I'll let you look at this one, 8 through 11. Just peruse it, and you'll come up with the answer here. It is so hard to be patient. <laughs> Tyre thought that she was invincible. Um, you can see that she had the best crews. She had soldiers. Uh, she was protected by the sea. We talked a, a bit about that as well. The very sea that would uh, protect her or that had protected her up to this point was going to be the one that would put her underwater. So. This is what we covered on 26 and 27, but again, um, as we get into chapter 28, we're going to finish off these thoughts around Tyre because it's really going to come down to the ruler of Tyre, the king of Tyre, and the judgment against him. So as we look through chapter 28 tonight, we've got four sections. The first section is uh, 1 through 10, the proclamation against the king of Tyre. Um, 11 through 19 is the lamentation for the king of Tyre. Um, and I really like that because, you know, you've got the proclamation in chapter 26 for the city. You've got the lamentation in, ch in chapter 27. And then you have the proclamation and lamentation for the king in verse 28. I'm um, sorry, chapter 28. Um, but then we move on to Sidon, uh, verses 20 through 24. Um, and it, again, it's very brief. We don't have a whole lot more about that. Um, and then finally, we end up with uh, the future hope for Israel. And it would have been great if they had done, uh, if, if the uh, scripture recorded the judgment against Egypt first, because that would be a nice segue into the hope for Israel for the next part, but that's okay. It's probably just another uh, hidden item for us to all uh, jump in on. So this is what we're going to be looking at tonight. Um, let's see here. And as we read, on the back of your handout, well... On the back of your handout, you already have the answers up on the board, so I should click fast. Um, but as we read through this, um, let's be thinking about what the four lessons we can learn from, the less, uh, from Tyre, uh, from the judgment against Tyre. So in the meantime, let me read uh, chapter 28, 1 through 19, um, and then we're going to have some observations. Then I'm going to read uh, the last half of it. So let's start with Ezekiel 28, um, verses 1 through 19. The word of the Lord came to me again, saying, Son of man, say to the prince of Tyre, thus says the Lord God, because your heart is lifted up and you say, I am a God. I sit in the seat of gods in the midst of the seas, yet you are a man and not a God. Though you set your heart as the heart of a God, Behold, you are wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that can be hidden from you. With your wisdom and your understanding, you have gained riches for yourself and gathered gold and silver into your treasuries. By your great wisdom and trade, you have increased your riches, and your heart is lifted up because of your riches. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, because you have set your heart as the heart of a God, Behold, therefore, I will bring strangers against you, the most terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of your wisdom and defile your splendor. They shall throw you down into the pit, and you shall die the death of the slain in the midst of the seas. Will you, will you still say before him who slays you, I am a god, but you shall be a man and not a god, in the hand of him who slays you? You shall die the death of the uncircumcised by the hand of aliens, for I have spoken, says the Lord. Moreover, the Lord, word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation for the king of Tyre, and say to him, Thus says the Lord God, You are the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. The sardius, topaz, diamond, beryl, onyx, and jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and emerald with gold. The workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. You were the anointed cherub who covers. I established you 
You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created, till iniquity was found in you. By the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within, and you sinned. Therefore, I cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of God, and I destroyed you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the fiery stones. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. I laid you before kings, that they might gaze at you. You defiled your sanctuaries by the multitude of your iniquities, by the iniquity of your trading. Therefore, I brought fire from your midst. It devoured you, and I turned you to ashes upon the earth. In the sight of all who saw you, All who knew you among the peoples are astonished at you. You shall become a horror and shall be no more forever. Okay. Um, Actually, before we get into, well, some of the observations, I probably should do the observations in order because otherwise I'm going to give them away. Um, So as we look at uh, some of the observations, let's take a look at verse 2. What is the... What is it that the king of Tyre is condemned for? What did he say to himself or to others? I am God. Dan got it in one. How about verse 3? Um, verse 3, actually verse 3 through verse 5 is a parenthetical statement. So, is, yeah, what does that mean? Wiser than Daniel. So it's a parenthetical statement, but there's probably another adjective for that, too. Who, who's speaking here? What does 28 verse 1 say? Who's speaking? It, it, it's Ezekiel that's the voice, but it's the word of God came to him. So we've got God saying to the king of Tyre, who thinks he's a god, in verse 3, hey, you're wiser than Daniel. Okay. There's no secret that can be hidden from you. With your wisdom and your understanding, you've gained riches for yourself. So there's a little bit of tongue-in-cheek here, I think. But I also think that that's a true statement in verse 4. With the wisdom and the commercial acumen, whatever you want to use uh, with the understanding, they have gained riches for yourself, meaning the king, and gathered gold and silver into the treasuries. By your great wisdom and trade, you have increased your riches, and your heart is lifted up because of your riches. End of the, the statement. So the question is, how much of that is hyperbole, and how much of that is actual fact? Or do we know? It feels like it is. Go ahead, Michael. You had something too? Oh, I was thinking maybe when he's talking about their, quote, wisdom, he's probably setting up for the point that, uh, that he's in control, you know, kind of like maybe that's, they think that they're so great that they did it all themselves, but he's about to humble them and perhaps make them realize that everything they had in the first place, they had because he allowed them to have it. That, that's where my head goes. Albert? I guess I'm reminded there's a, a movie from the 70s. It's either uh, James Stewart or, or uh, Henry Fonda, and they ask him, he's a cowboy, and they ask him, you know, would you give thanks for this food? And he's like, well, why? God didn't harvest it. God didn't plow it up. You know, and so it's just totally forgot where the blessings have come from. And I'm probably misquoting movie and actors, and it would be upset at me, but I just, I remember seeing that many years ago. Anything else? Did you say why he invoked God? Yes, that was my question. Can't wait till we... <laughs> <laughs> I'm the teacher. I can, I can keep... <laughs> No, no, it's, it's, it all goes together. Was, okay, first of all, 
Did the exiles know who Daniel was? What was he by this time? I'm going to look to my history experts here. What, was he a satrap or a ruler at this time? Or was he still a young man 10 years after, 10 plus 5 maybe, 15 years after he was taken away? You know, the king of Tyre had similar wisdom and insight that was impressive. You know. And, by the way, to your point and Michael's point about where that came from, in the story of Daniel, Daniel's very clear that I can only do this because God gave me this ability. In this case, that's still true, but the king of Tyre doesn't recognize that. God's kind of maybe nudging the message that way, too. You know, I gave you this ability. I'm still having a hard time getting my head around Verse 3 being a, a fact versus a tongue-in-cheek. But I don't know. It, it could be, I don't know, maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm jaded. <laughs> um, David. It's quite possible there's some sarcasm in there. It doesn't negate the fact that there's God-given wisdom that they utilized for their own gain and then, and then forsake God and didn't give him the glory. Now, that happens all the time. Um, to say that you are as wise as, as someone that would be known as being very wise um, certainly could be tongue-in-cheek sarcasm sort of there. So, okay, thank you, everyone. Um, good discussion. So, but, but I do believe that this next part, yes, the wisdom was produced from their wealth, their, uh, sorry, the wisdom produced wealth uh, from their trading, their commercial acumen, um, their position, their ability to take advantage of that. Um, and I think everyone's already said it, but this section really does set us up for the next section, which is God's point. Um, so verse 6 and 7, uh, this is it. This is the judgment um, on them. And it's because you have set your heart as the heart of a God. That's the statement. This is what's going to happen. Behold, therefore, I will bring strangers against you, the most terrible of the nations. They will draw their swords um, against the beauty of your wisdom, defile your splendor, and they shall throw you down into the pit, and you shall die the death in the slain, of the slain in the midst of the seas. So that was the, sec uh, the section I was looking for. Um, tell me more about the, uh, tell, me, tell me if, well, tell me about the statement at the end of verse 8 in the midst of the seas. Tell me the significance of including that in this uh, judgment against them. Mm -hmm. He mentioned they're going to be covered in water. Um, why is that very significant to Tyre? They live on an island. They thought that the sea was their protection, and yet the very sea that was their protection is going to be their part of their destruction. Um, and again, they just they, they put their faith in the wrong place. And in verse 10, you shall die the death of the uncircumcised by the hand of aliens, for I have spoken, says the Lord God. So again, they trusted in themselves. They're going to be judged. They, they have been judged. They're going to be taken down um, and destroyed. And it's not because of Nebuchadnezzar's power. It's because of whose power? God's power. Okay. Um, any obvious items that I missed in this first section before we move on? Okay. Um, looking at ver uh, verses 11 through 19, um, 11 through 15 really talks about the perfection and uh, beauty and, and all of the, the wealth that the king had. And again, it's setting themselves up. And again, God gave them all of this. God gave the king of Tyre all of this uh, abundance. Um, the abundance of their trading um, in verse 16 caused violence. Um, by the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within, and you sinned. Uh, therefore, I cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of God, and I destroyed you uh, from the midst of the fiery stones. Okay, that, that's the other interesting item that's uh, showing up here in this section. Um, 
three different times or two different times, it talks about uh, the fire uh, that is going to consume them. What else does water do? What does it protect you from? Fire, typically, right? So not only was there a physical protection by being on an island from others that weren't seafarers, but now we're, they, they also have a natural ability to put fire out, um, but they're not able to do that now because this is a fire that's coming from God. Jordan. Language is used uh, about the king here. Uh, and I think probably some of it's poetic and whatnot, but this is good stuff. This was not the Israelite nation. This was a, a foreign nation, a foreign king specifically. And I was trying to think of, are there other examples where God talks about someone in such high esteem at the beginning? I, and I couldn't think, I think Nebuchadnezzar, there was a few positive statements uh, that was made about him as part of prophecy and whatnot. But um, I guess my point is, it this seems like a little, the first, what, six verses, a little... He almost takes you back a little bit, like, wait a second, this, all this good stuff about this foreign king? Um, so I, I don't know what to make of that necessarily, other than that. Um, I, I agree with Daniel. I think maybe uh, uh, the, the reference to Daniel maybe does play a fact that God had bestowed some sort of gift upon the king, and he was not using it in the right way. But just an observation, interesting. No, I, I completely agree. Uh, go ahead, Daniel. Um, and just... Michael, I think, on Sunday referred to um, Hiram. Was that you that made that come? Um, you know, of all the nations covered in this section of Ezekiel, and y'all talked about it Sunday, really none of the other nations ever do anything good towards Israel. And yet there is this story from of old of King Hiram of Tyre making this alliance with David and helping out building the temple. So I'm wondering if that history plays into the description of Tyre here, which is, yeah, it's, it's kind of confusing. You know, how, how are they in Eden and in the garden of God and, and all that. But, you know, yeah, may, maybe that history um, exalts them and, and maybe even brought blessing upon God, maybe perhaps bless the king of Tyre, Tyre generally because of that ancient allegiance. And, and just again to point out, God's very specific with the sin, right? He's calling out the sin. He's not calling out that the wealth is, is why they're being destroyed. He's not calling it out from the wisdom, right? These are all kind of, well, these are, these are okay things, right? They're not, they're not good, they're not bad. They're, they're facts. The, the sin is the pride that the king showed, saying, it's me, I'm a god. Um, and it's interesting how many, well, we see that in the New Testament with uh, king, I can't remember which king it was that claimed he was god. Herod, it was Herod. Ah, I should have said it. By the way, he's is he really? That's awesome. Um, and, and he doesn't go crazy like Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, went, what, period of how many years? That he was, yeah, out to pasture one year. So for making the same claim. Um, so, okay, really good. We aren't going to make it through this. Um, so 17 through 18 really talks about pride. It's the sin um, that is what he's condemned for. And then finally, verse 19, um, this is an interesting statement that, that we see more and more. You've become a whore and shall be no more forever. Uh, we see that at the end of chapter 27, verse 36, you will become a whore and you will be no more forever. So, um, and again, it's God making that statement. And we have something similar, but not quite the same at the end of 26. So um, the, the result of their sin, uh, of his sin, is clear. Okay, moving on to Sidon. All right, these are much shorter, so we'll go through these much faster. Um, chapter 28, verse 20 through 24. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, set your face toward Sidon, and prophesy against her, and say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Sidon. I will be glorified in your midst, and they shall know that I am the Lord. When I execute judgments in her, and am hallowed in her, for I will send pestilence upon her, and blood in the streets. Um, the wounded shall be judged in her midst, by the sword against her on every side. Then they shall know that I am the Lord. 
and there shall no longer be a pricking um, briar or a painful thorn for the house of Israel from among all who are around them, who despise them, then they shall know that I am the Lord. Okay, so there's an interesting phrase there in 24 that we want to take a look at here in a second. So this is the judgment on Sidon. Uh, Verse 22, um, God is against you. He will be glorified in her midst. And we're about to see a phrase that pops up three different times here in in three verses. Um, And what is the, in in verse 23, the uh, the type of judgment that they're going to be judged with? Is this specific or general? based on the other uh, judgments against the nations in in chapter 25. Um, In 23? No, it's, to me, it feels very generic. You're you're going to be destroyed generically with pestilence, sword, um, well, pestilence and sword. There'll be blood in the streets. So we don't know when, uh, we don't know who. Um, does he say that Nebuchadnezzar is coming against Sidon here? Did you, it didn't really pop out, right? But twice we see the words, they shall know that I am the Lord, in verse 23 and then in verse 24. So as we look forward to... Um, So I don't actually have a lot on Sidon. Sorry, that was it. (laughs) So it's really kind of an extension of of, uh, Tyre. Um, Tyre and Sidon, they're both in Lebanon, present-day Lebanon. Sidon shows up in various events, but it's just kind of, to me, it seemed like it was an afterthought. Uh, Not sure if there's more than that. Okay, the last section here, chapter 28, 25 through 26. Let me start with 24. Um, and there shall no longer be a pricking briar or a painful thorn for the house of Israel from among all who are around them, who despise them. Then they shall know that I am the Lord God. Thus says the Lord God, when I have gathered the house of Israel from the peoples among them, among whom they are scattered and am hallowed in them in the sight of the Gentiles, then they will dwell in their own land, which I gave to my servant Jacob. And they shall dwell safely there, build houses and plant vineyards. Yes, they will dwell securely when I execute judgments on all those around them who despise them. Then they shall know that I am the Lord, their God. So, okay. Let me, let's look at verse 24 for a second. Um, is verse 24 associated with the prophecy against Sidon? Or is this a summary verse talking about Tyre and Sidon? or none of the above, or we don't know. Yes, so uh, the the comment was, this could be anybody that had been a thorn in the side against Israel. And this is, and that's exactly what I was going for. First, in chapter 25, we read about that same uh, kind of deliverance from Ammon, uh, Moab, Edom, Philistia, And then eventually we're going to get to Egypt as well. But we know that the primary sin that Tyre was condemned for was what? Pride. As opposed to necessarily being a thorn in the side of Israel. So it's interesting to me how God's bringing this right back to, hey, by the way, these nations celebrated, right? We talked about that in, in chapter 25 too. The nations celebrated when Jerusalem had an issue. That's exactly what Tyre was doing. Hey, Jerusalem's gone? Great, I'll move right in. Thank you very much. Thank you, God. You had nothing to do with it. Go away. So when we look at, so I think that's what verse 24 is meant for us to think about. Um, and again, they shall know that I am the Lord. God's doing this for a reason. And the reason is, he's God. He's delivering judgment. He's reminding everyone that he is still in charge. So when we look at verse 25, um, 
the house of Israel will be gathered out of the, the peoples where they were scattered. Okay, finally, this is a very specific verse to the exiles in Babylon. Do you, do you think that they knew enough to be able to hear when Ezekiel said this, that he's actually talking directly to them, that they are that remnant? Or are they still fuzzy on the concept of what Ezekiel is and who he's talking to? Hopefully? Hopefully? They know that he is God. Yes, exactly. Um, And they shall know that I'm the Lord. He's talking to the exiles about the people, right? The people's around him. But he's also talking to the exiles that they shall know that he is God. So when he says, I'm going to return you, they should believe him. They should have that confidence. Uh, David? Uh, The part of that verse that sticks out to me is that... um, he will manifest his holiness in them. So it's this, this returning that, that God will dwell amongst them once more, but this purging needs to occur. Um, uh, uh, this judgment has to come down on, on the unrighteous and the righteous. He shall dwell among them. I wonder if that's a messianic reference I'll go with that makes sense Um, we do read about dwelling safely uh, building houses building vineyards um, and then again it concludes with that same uh, same statement that they then they shall know that I am the Lord Um, and again this is also this is also made me think about Brian when he kept talking about you know, bringing the people back to Israel, I'm like, well, this is kind of that, isn't it? Because they're going to be returned and they're going to build these houses and vineyards. So it made me think about that too. Okay, last slide. Lessons for us. Um, of course, I've run out of time. I think there's five minutes or is there more? Dan's gone. Must be five minutes. <laughs> Eight minutes? Hey, maybe there's time. Okay, break into groups. I've always wanted to do that. Um, (laughs) This is one group, this is another group, that's the third group. And those in the back, good luck. Um, Come up with, based on what we've read today, um, I have four four lessons for us. I'm not going to click forward yet. So four lessons for us. See if you can come up with one or two, and then we'll see if we come up with all four. So... (laughs) That's the last one, yes. All right, she got one already. So three left. (laughs) Okay, talk amongst yourselves. Okay. I heard talking. That's always a good thing. Um, So if you didn't figure it out, we'll go through them in order. Um, The first lesson... Um, and we'll talk about each one of these just for a couple minutes uh, on your sheet. Beware of what and what? Pride. And? Arrogance or greed? So the word that was used in the commentary was seduction. Um, and <laughs> I like arrogance. So pride and arrogance are, are kind of similar. But this is really, pride is really something that comes from within, um, either from your own accomplishments or, well, from your own accomplishments. Seduction to me is this, this draw from someone else that's giving you the same feeling of pride, except it's, it's externally um, initiated as opposed to internally initiated. So I don't know if that's where the commentator was going with their, his thoughts, um, but maybe. Um, but I really, the, the other item that, that popped up there was don't trust in the sea. So I don't know if that's a lesson for us, but I wanted to extend it to don't trust in yourself because this, this life is, well, we've got examples every day. This life is fragile. It's short. It's uh, uncertain. Who knows what's going to happen, whether it be illness or violence or, or whatever. There's only one that we can trust in. So that leads me to number two, look to... 
God for true, it could be anything. So the true wisdom, I like that answer better than the one I have, but I can't go back and change it at this point. Anyone else have another word? Because it's not the one that's up there. Uh, very close. Riches and security. So look to God for true beauty. Uh, again, we, we had a whole section in, I think it was verse 11, uh, starting verse 11, chapter 28, that talked about all the beauty, the beautiful stones, the, the inlaid cloths and, you know, fabric, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah, that was beauty. What was Tyre known for? Tyre was known for their commercial acumen, for trading, they dealt in beauty and goods from the West, from the East. So this one, I like the, the wisdom answer better, though. Trust in God. Look to God for true wisdom, for true beauty. Um, trust in him. Uh, faithfulness, be faithful, is the, the third one. Increase your faith, look up, not around. Again, back to the trust in God. And then finally, proclaim. And that was the one that we started off with. Um, in our Q&A. All shall know that God is the Lord. So to me, that's, that's the message of, of Tyre for us. Um, we should know and be able to proclaim to everyone else around us that God is the Lord. So that's why we're here. Okay, thank you. Um, I think, well, Daniel left, so I can say whatever I want. Um, Sunday is chapter 29 of Ezekiel. <laughs> It may be chapter 29, 30, but I don't know. Uh, But at least read chapter 29, and you'll be talking about Egypt. Thanks.